everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we, we think, it all is ultimately a, a heart uh, issue. And so when we are not filled with thanksgiving, when we are not grateful, that's really an indicator that our heart is filled with pride and selfishness. I, I think it's interesting that Paul there, when he speaks of the last days, he says they will be lovers of self and they will be proud. And again, to be ungrateful is an indicator of pride and selfishness. Now, I said earlier, uh, I was talking about the holidays, and uh, I had mentioned that we, we want to pray one another, that, that uh, the holidays are, are very difficult for some people, and I certainly don't make light of that, and I meant what I said. But we want to be careful that, uh, that we keep our focus during the holidays on Christ. Because if we're not careful, the focus is no longer on Christ. It's no longer on the blessings of the Lord, but it will be focused on us. And then we won't be thankful. But we can be thankful no matter what has happened in our past. No matter what is going on in our present. We can be thankful because of who we are in Christ. And really, there is, there is no other way to have true joy and contentment and true happiness, as the Bible tells us, outside of thankfulness. It is amazing what having a thankful heart will do for you, not only emotionally, but even physically. The physical implications of having a heart of gratefulness. And so it is vitally important that we are people that we, we um, show our love for the Lord by being Thankful. And so Psalm 138, this is a psalm of David. This is, the, this is coming to the, the, the end of the, what we would call the Psalter. And uh, these, these final psalms, Psalm 138 through Psalm 145, are all ascribed to David. Now David, I don't think I have to tell you if you know much about your Old Testament, David certainly was not a perfect man. Uh, but he was a man after God's own heart. And as you read the Psalms, so many of the Psalms, not all the Psalms, but many of the Psalms were written by David. And one of the things that you so often see in David's Psalms are these, are these just affirmations of praise and thanksgiving to God. I think one of the reasons that David was such a thankful uh, man is because he understood what a great sinner he was. But yet, God had extended so much grace and mercy into his life. And so, therefore, he couldn't help but be thankful. And that is true for each and every one of us. We all have different pasts, but we all have one thing in common. As believers, we've been saved from sin. And we've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness, and we've been brought into the kingdom of light, and we have hope. And so, therefore, we should be people of thanksgiving. And so today, I want to look at David here. David, in this psalm, he gives us a, a beautiful picture of what it means to be thankful. And so we're going to learn from David today in regards to thankfulness. And there's three things that I want us, three observations regarding David's gratitude that I want us to point out or notice. Okay, so first of all, I want us to notice when David gave thanks. What was the occasion for his thanksgiving? Uh, what are some of the hardest things in life? What are some of the most difficult things in life to do? I was interested in that, so I did a little Google search. And I just typed in hardest things to do in life. And I was, I was uh, humored by some of the things that were mentioned. One person said, some of the hardest things in the world, or one of the hardest things in the world to do is saying goodbye. Uh, or kicking bad habits addictions. How about this one? One of the hardest things to do in the world is to get rid of stuff. You're seeing the movie or the show Hoarders. We all have a little bit of that in all of us. Uh, another person said, one of the hardest things in the world to do is parenting. Do I have an amen? I heard a mm-hmm. All right, ladies. Giving birth. Oh, this is tough. One of the hardest things in life to do is pushing away from the table. One of the hardest things in life to do is exercise. I can relate to this one. One of the hardest things in the world to do is ironing. I hate to iron. Ralph Waldo Emerson, he said, 
he said this, what is the hardest task in the world? To think. But how about this? One of the most difficult things in life to do is to be thankful in the midst of difficulty. And so as we look at David here, we ask this question, when did David give thanks? David here is giving thanks in a difficult season in his life. This is not David traveling on easy street. In fact, David was a king. He was a mighty king filled with much difficulty and affliction. And we don't know the specifics of what was going on in David's life, but we know from the psalm here that this is a difficult season. This was a time of trouble for him. And, and oftentimes, we're only thankful and grateful when things are going the way that we would like for them to go. And in fact, when, when things are hard, it's during times of difficulty that we can, if we're not careful, justify being ungrateful. But Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, he says this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So Paul there says you give thanks in all circumstances. Now he doesn't necessarily say give thanks for every single thing that happens to you. So in other words, hey, when you lose your job, he's not necessarily saying thank you God that I just lost my job. Or thank you, God, that my spouse just left me. But he is saying that no matter what you are facing in the midst of all the difficult things of life, be thankful. I read a story involving this Scottish minister. His name was Alexander White. And he was known for lifting up. And uh, he always... Sunday morning the the uh, weather was very very gloomy and dark and one member thought to himself certainly the preacher won't think of anything for which to thank the Lord on such a wretched day like this much to his surprise however the preacher began by praying we thank thee O God that it is not always like this and so we see here David is giving thanks his heart is overflowing with thanks but he's in the midst of a difficult season in his life. And, and I don't know what you are facing today. Perhaps you are in a difficult season. Perhaps you're facing some kind of affliction in your life. But even in the midst of your hardship and your affliction, you can be thankful. Because so often it is in the times of difficulty and in the times of affliction that we learn the most about the great God that we serve. It is in the hardest times that oftentimes God manifests himself most clearly to us. And so we learn, number one, when David gave thanks. Number two, I want us to observe, I want us to notice how David gave thanks. Notice verses one through two. Again, I want to read this. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise, I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. So we, we notice here the, the, the way that, that David gives thanks here. Notice he, he gives thanks individually. He, he says, I give you thanks, O Lord. I give you thanks. So David here is personally giving credit to God. He is thanking God because David had personally experienced those covenant blessings from God Almighty. And so he personally gives thanks to God. You know, it's one thing to be in a group of people where we are giving thanks. But it's a whole other thing when you are individually before the Lord, you are giving thanks to to God. Now remember, David is a mighty king, but David gives all glory to God. I've actually had some people, and, and um, it's almost like they get offended when, when you say, you know what, everything in your life is, is ultimately because of God, and it's almost like, well, yeah, I'm grateful for God, but I've kind of done some things myself to help myself along. I mean, God helps those who help themselves, right? wrong that's not what the bible says that's one of those little cliche things that sometimes we say but god helps those who can't help themselves 
And, and David understood that. And so David here is giving thanks individually, but also notice he gives thanks passionately. He says, I give thanks with my what? My whole heart. This is, this is not half-hearted gratitude, but this is, this is wholehearted gratitude. You could say it like this, that this thanksgiving was coming from the bottom of his heart. This is not legalistic, lifeless thanksgiving. He's not just going through the motions. Now, church family, I'm just going to tell you, I don't think that there is a better church family in the world than you. And I love you so much. But I just got to be honest with you. There's some times when we're singing praises to the Lord and you ought to see the expression on your faces. I love you, oh Lord. I, I need you. They, they tell me that I, I'm supposed to want you, oh Lord. It's, it's half-hearted, and we're all guilty of that. But David here, he's not giving some legalistic thanksgiving because this is what he's supposed to do. No, this is coming, again, from the very depths of his being. Every part of his being is, is giving thanks to God. And again, we all know that this is Thanksgiving week. If we're not careful, we'll just kind of check off the box. We'll have that big Thanksgiving meal. And of course, you're supposed to say that thanksgiving blessing where we give thanks but if we're not careful we just kind of go through the motions and then we stuff our faces and then we go to the couch and we fall asleep while watching uh football on tv but god wants a a a, a great our gratitude that is coming from the very depths of our being so so david here he gives thanks individually he gives thanks passionately but you notice he also gives thanks confidently notice he says before the gods I sing your praise. Now commentators are, are not all in agreement exactly what this word gods mean because in the Hebrew it could, it could apply to, to a couple different uh, uh, things. But, but I personally believe that, that in David's time, of course, there was all kinds of different gods that people worshipped. Uh, and David is saying, hey, I want to say this. I, I confidently, with confidence, declare that my joy... My hope, my strength comes ultimately from the one true God. And he is saying that in the audience of all these other false God. So my hope is not found in any of the gods of this world. My hope and my gratitude God goes to God Almighty. I just wonder this morning, this morning, today, if you found out you lost everything that this world has to offer, would you still be thankful just because you know that you still have God? We don't have little shrines that we bow down to and make out of, out of silver, but we've got plenty of gods in our society. And I could, I could give you a whole list of gods, but I don't have to do that because you know what they are. Money, success, pleasure, all these different things. Is that what we find our hope and joy in? Or do we find our strength in God? David here, he gives thanks confidently, declaring that, that he is thankful for God and God's mercy and grace in his life. Number four, he says, or he, he gives thanks publicly. David here, he, he mentions the, the temple. He says, I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your, your name. David mentions the, the, the temple. This, this refers to uh, public worship. They had in the, the Old Testament a, a thanksgiving offering that you would take in the form of a burnt offering, and you would offer that as a thanksgiving offering, and perhaps that's what David has in mind here. But, but the, the point is, while we don't know the exact details of this, we, we can gather that, that David, he could not keep his, his thanksgiving private. He couldn't keep it just between him and God. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't hold it in. He had to give it out. He had to publicly express his thanksgiving to the Lord. Psalm 111, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. It's as if David, he just couldn't wait 
to publicly in the assembly of God's people to tell all that God had done for him. David, he, he's not, yes, he was a king, but David was not too dignified to publicly express his thanksgiving to God. If you, if you remember in the book of, of 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel, I believe, chapter 6, when the ark of God is being brought back into Jerusalem, and it says that David is in the streets and he is dancing before the Lord. He is publicly declaring his praise. And then he had that self-righteous, pious wife named Michal. And she's sitting there in the window and she's looking down at her husband and she's upset with her husband because he's publicly declaring God's praise. And she's like, David, you're too dignified for that. And I'm afraid as God's people, sometimes we think we're too dignified to publicly express our praise. Do you ever, ever have moments in your life where God has just done something in your life and you're like, I cannot wait to get to church so I, so I can publicly share with, with my fellow church members what God has just done in my life. This is what David is, is doing here. So he, he, he declares his, his uh, praise individually, it's passionately, it's confidently, it's, and it's publicly, publicly declaring God's goodness in his, in his life. Well, thirdly and finally, as we look at some observation here regarding David's thanks, we notice there in verses 3 through 8, why did David give thanks? So we looked at when did David give thanks? How did he give thanks? Now why? He tells us why. He gets very, very specific. He, he thanks help in verse 3. Notice that. He says, on the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. So here he's saying, God, you've helped me. And specifically, God had helped David through some kind of answered prayer. Again, we don't know what the details of that prayer was. Perhaps it was uh, during that season of his life when his very own son was, was conspiring against him in Absalom and he's fleeing from Absalom or maybe it was during that time he's fleeing from, from King Saul. We, we just don't know. But, but David at some point in this time of difficulty had poured his heart out in prayer to God and God answered his prayer. And through the answer, God provided help and deliverance through prayer. Now, David here, he says, I thank God for answering my prayer. But we don't know how he answered David's prayer. Uh, like Paul, remember in the book of Corinthians, Paul had a thorn in his flesh. And, and you remember that the Bible says that there was three different seasons, literally, in Paul's life that he, through prayer, pled with the Lord that God would remove the thorn. And, and how, did, how did God answer Paul's prayer? He said, Paul, I'm not going to remove the thorn, but my grace is sufficient for you. And it was that promise that supplied strength to Paul. And, and so it very well could be that maybe David had a similar experience and maybe God didn't actually remove whatever was causing the discomfort in David's life. Maybe he did, we don't know, but maybe he just said, David, I'm not going to just completely take it from your life, but my grace is, is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And so David there in, in verse 3 he says, You answered me, my strength of soul you, you increased. And so today we... We can thank God. What can we thank God for? We don't have to just be generic. We can be specific. I thank God for God's help in my life. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very, do you know what it says? A very what kind of help? Present help in trouble. And, and so he helps those who who desperately cry out to him. And, and, and you know what? This is, this is especially applicable to God's people. But this, this area of help, it applies to lost people too. 
When lost people finally get to the end of themselves and they get to the end of their sin and they're so tired of their sin and they're so tired of having a guilty conscience and the weight of sin and in desperation they cry out to God for help and salvation. You know what the Bible says? All who call upon the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. And so David says, I give you thanks, God, for your help. But then we move on in verses 4 through 5. And David, he gives thanks for God's praise. Now this is, he kind of shifts gear here. And he kind of he looks to the future. Notice verse 4. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. And so here he's saying, I give thanks for God's praise. He, he, again, he's, he's looking forward to that day when, when God will receive universal praise from all people and all kings and rulers. Now, how about you? Do you, do you get frustrated sometimes with the world rulers? Do you get a little personally offended when they blaspheme our God? Well, guess what? One day, all peoples of the earth will bow the knee. And they will confess that Jesus is Lord. And so David here, he's looking forward to that future day when, when universally God will see, receive praise from all the earth, when all nations and all rulers will pay homage to the Lord as the true and one and only God. Psalm 72, verse 11, May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. That was the longing of David's Heart. And, and perhaps David here is saying, you know what, I'm publicly, I'm publicly declaring God's praise because I want the words of my praise to be heard by others so that other rulers and other kings will declare praise to God Almighty. Well, next he gives thanks not only for God's praise, but in verse 6 he says, I give you thank, thanksgiving, O God, for your concern. For your concern. Note verse 6. For though the Lord is on high... He regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. So he says, God, despite the fact that you were, you were above all, you were high, you were highly exalted, God, you were so big, words can't even describe the magnitude of, of who you are, but despite the fact that you're so high and exalted, you regard the lowly. To regard something means that you, you show concern for you give special uh, attention to. And, and so David here is, is saying, I thank you, O God, that you, while you are holy and magnificent, you give special concern and care to those who humbly look to you. David says he, he sees the wicked. Says he, he sees them, but he, he, he knows them from uh, afar, but he, 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 he gives special consideration to those who humbly look to him and of course as we we think about this and we 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 say oh lord we thank you for for the fact that you regard the lowly the ultimate way that god regarded the lowly was coming to earth as god in flesh he came for one reason to seek and to save the lost when you think about Jesus and you look at the cross, it should remind us of his regard for us. We couldn't come to God on our own. We couldn't somehow on our own find God, but instead he came and he found us. Newsflash this morning. If you're saved this morning, it's not because you found God. It's because God found you. Because he had special regard for you. And so he says, I give you thanks, O God, for your concern. And then finally, in verses 7 through 8, he gives thanks to God for his preservation. For his preservation. Many of you, you, you take those vegetables and other things and you, you can them. You, you preserve them. This is the idea that David here, he's thanking God. He says, I thank you, O God, that no matter what I go through, no matter what difficulty, no matter what affliction, You've promised that you're going to preserve my life. 
You're going to complete that which you first started in, in me. He says there in verse 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, Notice that that's in the present tense. Though I walk, though I'm walking in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life, you stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. You provide me deliverance. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. And so David here, he's pointing out a very important theological truth. Don't, don't miss this. As God's people, we're not immune from difficulty. We're not immune from hardship and trials and, and difficulty. He's not saying, hey, as long as you have just enough faith, then everything will always go your way. No, that's not what David is saying here. He's saying, I know that my life is full of afflictions, and, and I know that there are still some, some difficult days ahead for me, but I do know this, O oh Lord, that you will preserve me no matter what difficulty I, I may face because your plans... And the purposes that you have for me are settled in heaven. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, for, for what God has started in us, he will complete that work in us. And, and so this is why. This is why, church, that we can thank him even in the midst of difficult times. Because we know that no matter what we go through, he's going to preserve us that his grace will carry us through those difficult times. And it's the difficulty of life that he uses to burn away those things that keep us from looking like him. A man by the name of A.W. Pink, he once said this, Yes, give thanks for all things, for as it has been well said, our disappointments are but his appointments. I read this legend about this king. This was a fascinating little story. It says a, a king once placed a heavy stone in the roadway. Then he hid and waited to see who would remove it. Many who came by loudly blamed the government for not keeping the highways clear. But none assumed the duty of pushing the obstacle out of the way. At last a poor peasant stopped out or stopped and rolled the stone into the gutter. To his surprise, he found a bag full of gold embedded in the road beneath the spot where the rock had been uh, hidden or uh, placed. And a note said, it was the king's reward for anyone who removed the troublesome object. Because God is sovereign and he is faithful, we know that there is a blessing hidden behind every trial and difficulty we Face. Because according to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 4, God has made everything for its purpose. Did you hear that? God has made everything for its purpose. Do you believe that this morning? You want to know how? You want to know how you know you really believe that? When you face some unexpected difficulty, are you still giving thanks? Because you say, you know what, I don't understand this. And I don't particularly like this, what I'm going through. But I know that God loves me. And he is sovereign. And he doesn't allow anything in my life that he doesn't have a plan and purpose for. And so, here we, we see David. He say, hey, listen, you know, I, I, I know that my life's full of trouble. I still got trouble sometimes coming. But I know, I praise him, that he preserves me. I've heard it said that, you know, our destiny is being determined right now. No, church, our destiny as God's people is already settled. Despite what happens down here, God's destiny, God's purpose, what he has planned for us is settled. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that we serve such a mighty God that he is not held in bondage to what we do or don't do. Somebody give me an amen, or I'm just totally theologically out in left field. Thank you. He preserves us no matter what we face because his steadfast love endures forever. I, I like what Jude Jude verses 24 and 25 
says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. So, today we've, we've noted as we've looked at this psalm of thanksgiving by David, we, we've observed when did David give thanks in the midst of affliction. And difficulty. We've note how we've noted how he's given praise and thanksgiving. It was passionate. It was heartfelt. And then we've observed why. Why did he give thanks to God? Now, how do we take this and how do we apply it to our lives? Three words of application. Number one. Number one. Privately ponder God's faithfulness. Privately ponder God's faithfulness. Ponder, meditate. Think about all that God has done in your life. In the privacy of your own heart, you get along with God and you just begin to think about all the things that God has done in your life. And perhaps you even just want to take a notepad and you just want to begin to write down things that he brings to your mind of what God has done in your life. Church, do you ever think about what if... What if you had, you know, you had a trip planned and something happened and the trip got canceled? Do you ever wonder why did God allow that trip to be canceled? Maybe there was something that God foresaw that was going to happen to you on that trip. And so in his mercy and his grace, he spared you. You know, I think we would be blown away. In fact, I know we would be absolutely blown away if we could, with spiritual eyes, see the warfare that is going on right around us right now. The devil would like to take every single one of us out, but God in his mercy and his grace, he preserves us. I think and I hope that every single person sitting here right now, you have clothes on. Why? Because God is good. He takes care of us. We don't have to worry about health care here in America. We don't have to worry about food here in America. Why? Because God is a good God. The fact that we're sitting in his church right now with his word, worshiping his name freely, is a testimony of his goodness in our lives. And if we're not careful, we begin to look so much inwardly, and it's all about us. And when we look just inwardly, we're not going to have an attitude of gratefulness. And when we don't have an attitude of gratefulness, we're going to be miserable and we're going to be depressed. But when we're thankful for all that he's done for us, joy and gratitude flows out of our hearts. And so privately, privately, this week, just, just sit down and say, God, I just, I just want to meditate. I just want to think about all the things that you've done in my life to, to show your, your grace and goodness to me. So privately ponder God's faithfulness. Number two, publicly praise God's goodness. So, so you start out by privately just getting along with God and doing a, a spiritual inventory of your life. So, so, your, so your praise tank, that sounds really weird, but your praise tank, that, that sounds very TBN-ish, but your praise tank gets full and then it, then it, then it overwhelms in the public of, or in the, in the assembly of God's people. And so you publicly praise God for his goodness in your life and you testify what God has done in your life. And so when the preacher says, hey, can I have a praise in the house of God this this morning or this evening every house or every every hand raises you say you know i just want to tell you what god has done in my life so often I, and i can only speak for me it's almost like it's like i need prodding i need some kind of uh, emotional pushing on me to publicly give thanks to god for what he's done but why is why is that should we not be overflowing with praise to god and so privately ponder God's faithfulness, publicly praise God's goodness. And then thirdly and finally, purposely practice thankfulness. Purposely practice thankfulness. I've heard it said that God wants our thanksgiving to be thanks living. God wants our thanksgiving to be a verb. He wants our thanksgiving to be expressed in, in action, Tim Keller once said, Gratitude is what you feel, thanksgiving is what you do. The late R.C. Sproul once said, God doesn't want us to feel gratitude, 
but for us to show it by giving thanks to God with our lives. So, so God, he, he wants us to express our thanksgiving not only with our lips. You've heard it said, talk, talk is cheap, right? Well, you can all sit here today and we can say with our lips that we're thankful, but how do we truly show our thanksgiving? I, I think the Bible gives us an answer for that. He, or Romans chapter 12, verse 1 tells us, this is, this is, how, we, this is how we put our thanksgiving into a verb. It's, it's giving ourselves as a sacrificial offering to God. That's what it means. It means that I surrender myself as a living sacrifice to God. So, so God, I, I am so overwhelmed by all that you've done in my life, and my mere words don't do justice. And yeah, we need to use our lips to tell them how thankful we are. But he wants us to use our lives, every part of our lives, to, to show him how thankful we are to him. He wants us to faithfully serve him. He wants to be supreme in all of our lives. He doesn't want anything else to come before him. He wants us to be faithful to the house of the Lord. He wants us to use those spiritual gifts that he's given us to serve God's people. He wants us to use our finances to honor him by giving back to the Lord. He wants us to, to use our lives, every aspect of our lives, to show our thanksgiving to him. So ponder privately God's faithfulness, publicly praise God's goodness, and then thirdly and finally, purposely practice thankfulness. Well, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your word and the, the example here that David gives us of thanksgiving. And, and Lord, we, every single one of us in this building, we all, we all fall short in this area of thankfulness, some of us more than others. But, Lord, we all struggle with this because we're sinful people. And we can be so prideful and we can be so selfish. Lord, we, we know that we don't have to live under condemnation. Of that is just a reminder of how much we need you. But, Lord, as we look to you, we have so much motivation as your people to, to not only to be thankful during Thanksgiving week, but every single day, every moment our eyes awake in the morning, we can thank you for, for all that you've done for us, for who you are. So much we have to be thankful for. And may we be faithful to do that. Lord, may we not only say it with our lips, but may we, even more importantly, show our thanksgiving with the way that we live. May we each be a living sacrifice that is offered up to you to be used for your glory. So, Father, we pray that as we come to this time of invitation, that we would listen to the Spirit's call and that we would respond to however you lead us to respond. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, at this time, I want to invite you to stand as we give praise, thanksgiving to God. Maybe this morning there's a decision you need to make. I, I don't know about you, but when I... As I was preparing this message, I thought, wow, Lord, I am so thankful for all that you've done for me, but I have to admit, Lord, there are so many times that I fail to give my thanksgiving, and, and that's true of all of us, because again, it's just a reminder that we're all fallen sinners, and we need a Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. And so today, the greatest thing that you can do to show your thanksgiving to God is by accepting Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. If you're not saved today, would you please come, come forward so that you can learn how you can Come to know the Lord Jesus personally. Maybe come, you want to come to the altars and pray, or, or maybe you just want to sit there right there in your seats and you just want to reflect on all that God's done in your life and you just want to thank him uh, for his goodness. As we continue to worship him through song, I surrender all, hymn number 433. Jesus, 
Aren't you glad that God is a patient God? You know, today's message is meant to challenge us. It's not meant to condemn us. Uh, we all, I think, could, I think I can speak on your behalf. There's a lot of times that we don't give thanks as we should, right? But don't you think that, thank the Lord that he is a patient father. And he loves us even when we're not as thankful as we should be. And so we leave today and we say, you know what? Hey, maybe I hadn't been as thankful as I should, but I'm going to, I'm going to change. And I'm going to intentionally, from today on, I'm going to try to do a better job. And every day I'm going to start waking up and I'm just going to think of some reasons why I can give thanks to God. Well, church family, I hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, enjoying time with your family, your friends. Uh, maybe you're just going to be by yourself, but you know what? You're not by yourself. The Lord is with us and I just hope that uh, you, you enjoy the goodness of God. And, uh, of course, if you are by yourself and you say, I don't want to be by myself, hey, give me a call. You're always welcome at uh, the Wingertson family table. we got a few cripples at the table, <laughs> but that's okay. It'll make it interesting. So God bless you. Let me close this in a word of prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Lord Jesus, we thank you, oh, Lord, for your unending love. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we do want to be a thankful people, but we thank you that you are a patient father. And Lord, we thank you that even when we fail miserably in this area of thankfulness, you still love us, and you still are working in us, and you're growing us. Now, Lord, as we leave today, may we go out with hearts full of thanksgiving. May the lost world see the joy that radiates out of our lives as we live lives of thanksgiving for your glory. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I forgot that.